In this video, we're going to be discussing another special test used in the assessment of a lumbar radiculopathy, and that is the crossed straight leg raise test. The crossed straight leg raise test is performed almost identically to the straight leg raise test, except for the fact that this test is done on the uninvolved lower extremity. Remember that the regular straight leg raise test is done on the involved side. So before you ever do this test, you need to know which side is associated with the radicular symptoms. So for this example, let's suppose we have a patient with a suspected lumbar radiculopathy, and she reports that her radicular symptoms are going down her right lower extremity. And those radicular symptoms could be numbness, tingling, radicular burning shooting pain, they could be weakness in some of the muscles, but they're on the right side. The straight leg raise test would be done on that side. That would be the involved side. The cross straight leg raise test is going to be done on the other side, the uninvolved side, which in this case is her left lower extremity. Okay, So she's going to be in supine here, and with both knees in the fully extended position, the PT will passively elevate the patient's uninvolved lower extremity up until the point where familiar pain and or radicular symptoms are reproduced. Okay, So I'm going to take her uninvolved lower extremity and essentially do a straight leg raise monitoring for reproduction of symptoms. So let's suppose right about here is where the patient begins reporting pain and or radicular symptoms. I need to make sure to ask the patient about both the location and nature of those symptoms because those are going to dictate how I interpret the positive test. That being said, a positive cross straight leg raise test is going to be the reproduction of radicular symptoms on the involved lower extremity. That's the right side here. Okay. And that's normally going to occur at 40 degrees or less of hip flexion on the uninvolved side. Okay. Usually with a cross straight leg raise test, you're not going to take the uninvolved side up to you know, 60 degrees. Normally it's going to reproduce symptoms at 40 degrees or less. Okay. Now, if the patient reports simple isolated low back pain with no radicular symptoms, that more implicates a simple disc protrusion, and it would be more of a central disc protrusion. Remember, a central disc protrusion is normally not going to compress a nerve root because the nerve roots are off to the side. You would have to have more of a posterolateral lateral disc protrusion to compress the nerve roots. So if there's no radicular symptoms, it's probably a disc protrusion, and it's more central. But if the patient reports contralateral lower extremity radicular symptoms, meaning radicular symptoms going down the affected side, which in this case is still on the table, that would implicate a lumbar radiculopathy. Sorry for the misspelling there. Now the psychometrics of this test were evaluated by Van der Wint et al. in 2010. And the psychometrics are essentially the opposite those are the straight leg rays. Remember, straight leg rays had a very good sensitivity and very poor specificity. But the specificity here is all the way up at 90%, meaning this test is much better at ruling up a lumbar radiculopathy. So if somebody has a positive cross straight leg raise test, there's a 90% chance that they have a lumbar radiculopathy. Let's take a look at this test one more time. So the patient will be positioned in supine, and we're essentially going to perform a straight leg raise test on the uninvolved side. So we first need to know which side is affected. We're supposing here that the right side is affected, so we're going to be doing it on the left side, the uninvolved side. And we'll elevate that patient's uninvolved lower extremity up until the point where they report familiar pain and or radicular symptoms. And again, isolated low back pain with no radicular symptoms is more along the lines of a disc protrusion. But if they do get radicular symptoms into the contralateral or the involved lower extremity, that implicates a lumbar radiculopathy. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 